Hi, I'm Pastor Goodman. And this is the Lord's Weekend God's Life. So, when we're called to pray, lead us not into temptation, God would have us recognize that this is not a fair fight. You can tell yourself all you want about the power of positive thinking or, you know, human willpower or that, you know, if you're just willing to to really put forth the effort, you can do it. Um, But if you're willing to actually be honest about what you're up against, it's just, it's really overwhelming. And I understand why people downplay it. I understand why people would call evil good, because it's easier than figuring that we have to stand against it and resist it. I understand why people hide from the world, from each other, even from ourselves in fantasy and and imagination. In the large catechism, Luther writes, Great and grievous indeed are these dangers and temptations which every Christian must bear, even though each one alone by himself, so that every hour that we are in this vile life where we are attacked on all sides, chased and hunted down, we are moved to cry out and to pray that God would not suffer us to become weary and faint and to relapse into sin, shame, and unbelief. For otherwise, it is impossible to overcome even the least temptation. So we pray. Lead us not into temptation, because this isn't a fair fight, because God fights for you. Lead us not into temptation, because God has already conquered it for us. It is possible to overcome temptation, not in your will alone and you just really, really trying hard, but in Christ alone, who drowns the old Adam and raises up the new man, not simply to never suffer again, not yet at least, not until that last great day when we fully see the victory won for us and the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting, but even now, even here, while we are surrounded on all sides, we can actually pray, lead us not into temptation and live unafraid, even without downplaying or dismissing the law, even without hiding from it, because it cannot condemn you anymore. Lead us not into temptation, because we are free to live even in this dangerous world as if God would truly shelter us, that we can actually strive toward good, not measured in us somehow doing something by resisting temptation or abstaining from a sin, but measured in him giving out the gifts that make it possible in the first place. See, God will not suffer us to become weary and faint. God will not suffer us to bear shame. He names us holy and worthy of love in the waters of our baptism. He calls us to look first there to see the victory that is already ours so that when we would face each day, we would do so in courage and in hope because we know who we are. We're the baptized. It's not that we'll earn salvation by our works this day. But it's because there's nothing that's so dangerous here that Christ hasn't already saved us from it. And there's no temptation that can conquer him. This, this isn't a fair fight at all. Because Christ is on our side. 